Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What a blessing to have everyone in the house today. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Salute to everyone online. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We give God the glory that his presence is here. Amen. That he's with us. Amen. It's been a blessed week and amen of, of Elder Brian and his, his wife coming to, to bless us. Amen. All the saints online, all the sisters, all the family. It truly is family. Amen. That has shed abroad into our hearts their love for us. Amen. And it's the love of God. It's, it's love that it's tangible. You can feel it. It's, it's, it truly is a blessing. Amen. So I praise God for each and every one that labored diligently. Amen. That came to pour into this household, into our, our marriage and the children and the, and the baby Ruth that's expecting to come. Amen. I pray God to bless y'all a thousandfold. Amen. And I praise God that, that, um, that I'm in the house of the Lord and I praise God that I'm in this body. Glory to God. That I'm in this body. Amen. That I'm in this, this church. Amen. The church of the living God, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Amen. And so, uh, without further ado, I do want to give space as our beloved elder from main campus is here. Whatever the Lord puts on his heart to greet the congregation here. Those who follow online, amen. And then we'll, uh, we'll continue in the word in the name of Jesus. Mm. Glory to God. Yes, yes. yes, sir. God bless you. Ready to do the right thing. Just, uh, yo. There you go. All right, we'll see where they got. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Good morning, family. Hallelujah. Who's ready to receive of God today? Yes. Hallelujah. Truly, his word, it is a light unto our path. It's a lamp sure for is. our feet. It is that word that keeps us and shows us where we need to go. So I'm just excited to hear what God has put into the angel of this church. I salute the, the church here in Tucson, Arizona, in the name yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. So thankful just to receive of God today through your beloved pastor, Joshua, and his wife, expecting wife, looking gorgeous. Hallelujah. Yeah. Sister Steffi B., glory be to God. It's just been truly a heartfelt weekend. And right now we're getting ready to just feast in the spirit. So just prepare your hearts and minds. I don't have any other word other than just to encourage you to prepare your hearts for what God has for us. It will be of the Lord. We just pray that the Lord Jesus put in the mouth of our pastor here, of our shepherd, what each and every one of us need for this hour to keep on going a little further in God. We're his vessels. We're doing his will. We're at his command. He is our governor. He is, he is the chief shepherd and bishop of our souls. And so whatever he has for us, we pray his kingdom come, his will be done this day. We're asking for his word the daily bread of life right here, Lord Jesus. Let us receive it, oh God. Let it fall on good ground in Jesus' name. I love you all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, sir. God bless you. Amen. What a, what a blessing, amen, to have an elder from the church come and bless us at the, main, or the Arizona campus. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Amen. Yeah, so without further ado, amen, I will, we'll get into the word as the Lord put on my heart to get into today. And I think it it's so funny in a sense of how the Lord put it on me for this time when Elder Brian's here. Because Elder Brian is a man that I've looked up to in the faith that uh, is not slothful, right? He's absolutely not slothful and he's very diligent with his work. Yeah. Ministry, family, and in the church. Amen. So I praise God for him in my life. And that's today's word. The, 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 the spirit that the word of God is going to address today is slothfulness. Amen. Amen. Is slothfulness. And so, you know, the Lord takes us from glory to glory, as his word says. And, and this spirit of slothfulness tries to come against that. Right. It tries to hinder the growth. First off, deliverance. Right. Then growth. Mm -hmm. And it tries to suffocate. If it's if you're still going to try to grow, it's going to try to suffer to or to, to suffocate you to make it in. Mm -hmm. Because being slothful, you're not going to be prepared when the bridegroom comes. Even as the worship song was coming on to this morning, right? right? And it just it hit just in the heart as those as that song was being lifted up unto the Lord that make us ready for you, Lord. Sure did. Make us ready yes, because. Lord. 
we sow into the carnal, you're going to reap of the carnal. You sow into the spiritual, you're going to reap that which is of the Spirit and the yes. Holy Ghost. Right? And so we're not laboring in this life to see and build up our kingdom now. We're laboring for the life that's to come. But yet still, while we're here, we're laboring with the Lord Jesus, right? right. Yes, we are. And we do have a work here to do. Yes, we, do. we have a mighty work here to do. Thank you, Jesus. And so... I want to give honor to my wife as well. Yes. Amen. My wife is definitely, glory to, glory to God. My wife is not slothful. Amen. The Lord Hallelujah. has used her to help me to, bite, to fight that spirit as well. Hallelujah. Right? You come, a man of complete disorder, did what I want, what a schedule. It was, talk, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a death lifestyle, right? So coming back into a, a, a normalized civilian mind and being transformed in the Holy Ghost. And living a life that's normal, quote unquote, right? But really normal in the in the scripture, right? Of the of the people of God. The Lord used my wife to be diligent, and I thank God for her as she's um, blessed by the grace of God to labor with two toddlers in this house while caring about to give birth. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. She, even with everything that she has on her plate, she's still not slothful, Amen. and it amazes me. Hallelujah! It just it it blesses my heart. And I'm like, Lord, am I doing enough? You know, I'm at work. I come home and I'm so tired. I'm like, and she's still going. I know she's been laboring all day with them. So I got to pick it up, right? I got to I gotta be that stronger vessel. It's not the opposite, right? The stronger vessel is supposed to help the weaker vessel, right? But the spirit of slothfulness will try to come and disturb that, that order, right? It'll try to come and disturb that order to now where the burden is being up on my wife. And I feel like I'm, I'm justified not to... Not to carry that burden and help her when I come home because I'm, I have this spirit of slothfulness coming upon me, right? And it tries subtly to come in. It's subtle. It'll try to subtly justify itself in, in small, subtle ways, just like the serpent does. Because it'll start with a just, well, you've been laboring, you moved a thousand pounds of wire today, and you did this and did that. But nevertheless, though, yeah, but the work still continues at the home. My home is the first church. Right. God forbid I'm laboring more for a man that's living for this life and is my employer. But yet I'm laboring more for him than I am for my own church. Right. right? My own household. Right. Unto the Lord. Right. So I wanted to give honor. Amen. To my wife for, for being such a blessing unto me. I see why God put us together in so many ways. Amen. So many ways. It truly is of the Lord. Her for me and me for her. Right. And this is where we two become one. And so this, again, as we're speaking of this marriage, marriage is so much more deeper than just coming together for intimacy. Yes, for bearing children, but it's so much deeper than what the carnal mind just drifts to and thinks towards. It's so spiritual. God brings two together to become one to fight a good fight of faith and to grow up in the kingdom of God. And so it's so vital how you be patient on the Lord if you're seeking to be, if you're single, seeking to be found, you know, to be a spouse to a man and such things, right? If you're seeking to come together, you got to be patient on the Lord. It has to be of the Lord. Right. Amen. Amen. Because if you try to move out of line out of that, mm, you're going to bring a bur- or a yoke upon you that God didn't want for you to have. Right. And you'll have to carry that. Right. You'll have to carry that yoke if you come in covenant that way. Amen. Amen. But moving forward, slothfulness, let's address it in the scriptures, right? So we know Slothfulness, faith without works is dead. James chapter 2 speaks of that very clearly, right? Faith without works is dead. I'm, I'm just speaking on it, but really I'm going to jump to Matthew chapter 25 today. Um, that's where we're going we're gonna to stick the shovel in the ground. Amen. Matthew chapter five, uh, 25, verses 14 through 18. I'm just going to jump through there a little bit and then moving forward. So faith without works is dead, right? Because there's that these different movements and in, in Christian belief or really theory is what I want to say that name it and claim it, these type of things to where you can just use the scripture as it says, believe that you received it and you will. But if you ain't putting in your work, you ain't going to reap it. Right. right. You want, you want this, that, the other, and the third so much, but are you ready for it? Because it's going to come with a labor, right? Even, even with a vehicle, let me start there real quick with a vehicle. You get a vehicle, And it's like, well, praise the Lord, I don't have to take the bus and stuff no more, right? No, that's a labor. You got to maintain that vehicle, right? There's a cost to that vehicle. There's registration. I mean, (laughs) gas costs money, you know what I'm saying? So, like, there's a work with that. It's a blessing, but there's work, right? So, 
Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 18. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Right? This is of the Lord. And unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability. And straightway took his journey. Right? So, just even pausing right here, sev uh, several ability. That God gives unto us what we can't handle. Mm -hmm. Right? As my wife, the, wisdom of, the spirit of wisdom through her was speaking recently to Elijah... God wouldn't have you to be the, the oldest of sons with more coming if you weren't fit for it, right? If you, he, because he starts to feel overwhelmed when we, we show him, look, you have a, an order, you have, you know, siblings that are going to look up to you, but God, that wisdom came, God would not place you there if it was not right. fit for you to be there, right? right? So what, what God gives to us, it may feel sometimes, it could come to a place where you get so tired, where you just want to give up yeah that happens but then even just get slothful right that's what we're focusing on right. and but god says he's going to give to us to our ability right and sure took his journey verse 16 then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents right he doubled and likewise he that received two he also gained other two but he that received one now i'm going to, yeah it's verse 18 uh matthew chapter 25 Yes, sir. Verse 18 now. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth mm -hmm. and hid his Lord's money. Can't be doing that. This was a revelation. I forgot if it was just a prayer call or during a fast. It came through the church. I, I believe our apostle of the church. That this scripture right here, when it talks about he went and digged and hid it in the earth. We're formed out of the earth, out of the dust of the earth, right? right? Mm -hmm. You see the revelation already coming that he sowed into his flesh. Mm -hmm. He sowed into himself. Yeah. He took the talent that God gave him. Yeah, it was only one, but it was still something that God gave. And he sowed it into his own way of thinking, his own desire, his own mind frame of not to actually go and labor with it, but to hide it, mm. right? He hid it. So basically, he, 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 he continued in the carnal way of just doing X, Y, and Z. But God says, I got a talent for you to go and be fruitful and to multiply with this thing. But he said, no, nah, I don't want to go ahead and labor in the spiritual with that. I just want to continue with my X, Y, and Z. Right? Because I'm good over here. I've been delivered. I've been set free. I, I, I baptized in Jesus and even received the Holy Ghost. But yeah, now you've given me something I got to go and multiply with. I would rather be slothful with the thing, right? Because it's this, the, the talent is spiritual, right? Sure. But this is of the flesh, X, Y, and Z. Right. So he said, no, I'm just going to hide that and tuck it away later, and I'm going to do this, right, which is of the flesh. Now, verse 24, 24 through 30, right? Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not straw. Thank you, Jesus. Right? That thou was an hard man. Basically, the Lord, he's, he's the Lord of the harvest. He can speak a thing. He does. He speaks a thing and it comes to pass. It, it actually comes to a physical matter and is created. Right? But nevertheless, though, that where he, he, he reaps wherever he, he, he chooses to, right, is basically what, what it's speaking of, right? And thou oughtest therefore to have put my money, I'm sorry, I, I skipped that, let me get here, verse 25, and I was afraid, right? So you look at this in verse 25, and I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Right? It's over there. Right. I buried it. Right. right? Right? Because why? He said he addressed it, though. That's a good thing right here is because afraid. Being afraid to get a talent from God, first of all, we can't be afraid of it. No. Because when you actually get the talent, right? It's not a physical piece of gold, but a talent. Even Elder Joseph speaks this as a talent, right? As, as worship, of, of teaching, of preaching, evangelizing, Amen. right? But this thing actually goes so much more further than that. This goes into laboring, right? We have physical health. We can move. We have limbs. We can move and walk. 
to whom much is given, much is required. Right. This right. thing goes so deep. You don't have to be ordained in the fivefold ministry for this word to hit you. This is for every single yes, vessel, every single body. Yes, yes, sir. Right? So he said he was afraid. Right? And that spirit of fear is a liar. Mm -hmm. It's an absolute liar. And we line that right up with the devil. Right? Because he's going to come and try to put things, well, you, you know, let's say for a man of God that got ordained, right? Oh, you don't know the scriptures that well. You don't have understanding here. You don't, da -da 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 -da, all these things, right? For someone that, that is laboring, right? That isn't ordained or a woman. Oh, how are you going to be a mother? And how, you, you, you can't even bear children, the doctor said, but now you're going to. So all these things, that fear will try to come and speak doubt and will lie to you because the word of God speaks the exact opposite, mm. right? We don't need to be afraid. If God sees fit to give me one talent, two, five, whatever he sees fit, he says that I have the ability to do it. To have it, yes, but to bless and multiply and labor with it, that it increase. Yes, right. right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he would not have given, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have pulled us out and redeemed us and given us the talent. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. right. But this is written for an example that we could see, right? That when things try to come against us to make us feel timid, afraid, or we don't have enough of this or this, that, the other, or the third. Well, that's true in the mind of, of a carnal man. We don't have it. Because it's in the mind of Christ that we have to be, and we have to get God's wisdom how to bless that talent and that, in, that, that talent to get the increase, right? Lord, how would you have me to labor? How would you have me to, to use what you've given me thus far? Lord, and even in the seasons as they change, well, how can I labor more diligently here, more there? And God will show you consistently, Amen. consistently, right? But he was afraid. Amen. So verse 26 says, the Lord, his Lord answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore have to, to have put my money with the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury, right? You might as well just go and put it with the bank, right? The bank, it'll slowly accumulate, but it'll do something, right? Compared to just being afraid to grow with Christ and to labor in the Spirit, right? And, and, and to, to, to discipline yourself is what really comes down to, right? Because slothfulness comes with the exact opposite of discipline. Mm -hmm. It's the exact opposite, right? right? And, and so many of us, when we were being, when, when, when the Lord came to whatever manner and degree, but when we get born again and we're saved, you know, we get saved and we're living for God, it's a renewing of the mind. Right. This is a renewing of the mind. And the spirit that's behind it seeks not to leave, Right? Glory to God. So the Lord said, you might as well have gone and put it with the bank. Verse 28 says, take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath 10 talents. Right? Why? Because that man labored and he doubled it. If God's going to give us a talent, we have to see it as a blessing and as a gift. Right? And not as... And the flesh will start to feel that way. And the devil will try to put these thoughts on us that it's a burden, that it's too much. You know, that try to look at that towel. It is something that you don't want to have. Mm -hmm. Literally, mm -hmm. the devil will make you feel like, man, you, you got it's so much for you to bear. How can you bear? How can you go and flip the five talents to make it into ten? Do you know what you have to do and go through? Yeah, I see what the Lord is showing me, but nevertheless, that's where I can't lean on my own understanding. But in all of my ways, I have to acknowledge God. Ooh. I have to acknowledge him in all things and in all ways, sometimes down to the every breath that I take. Lord, I don't know yes. how I'm going to do this, Amen. but by your grace yes. and in that place of being Amen. humble and having humility and not being prideful and not being afraid of the Lord to where you hide and, and run from him and that you seek his face, his wisdom comes. And he says unto you, right, move here, move here, do this, right. do that, right? Put your hands to the plow and move, right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so he said, take that and give unto him that has the 10, verse 29, for unto every one that, that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant, right? This is, this is a highlight right here when this wraps up in verse 30. Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, right? So there was a place where he said that he was afraid of the Lord, 
But we're not to have that spirit of fear that we move in this manner of this servant. No. A fear of the Lord when the scriptures speak is a deep reverence and honor and respect for the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel. And when you have that healthy type of the right righteous fear of the Lord, you're going to move in the manner of, Lord, I got to do better. Lord, I can't just sit on what I got that you've given me. This is a blessing. I got to do something with this. Lord, how do I move? Lord, I may not have the understanding of the knowledge and wisdom, but Lord, I got to continue to seek, right? I got to continue to seek and to get into your word. And Lord, just show me. You'll show me either in the scripture, you'll speak to me through prayer, or you'll, one way or another, you're going to show me. And I have to then do what you say to become a profitable servant. But the unprofitable servants, right, they're going to be cast into outer darkness, right? So even a man or a person that gets and receives a talent from the Lord, we have to maintain this mindset because the spirit of slothfulness wants to come and hide that talent. Right. It wants to come and say, you know, you've done this, you've done that, you've, you've poured into the ministry so long, you could take some time off. You could take a good amount of time off. Look what God's done through you, Right. But God forbid, that's when the scripture has to come, right? As Paul said, I'm looking to the things that were behind me. I'm looking to the things that are, that are more ahead of me. Everything that was done, glory to God, but there's more to go. There's more fruit to bear. There's, there's more labor to do in the home. There's more labor to do in the ministry. There's more souls to be saved. So you keep going with the mindset and the spirit of the Holy Ghost. There's so much more work to do. Don't get stuck on what, you, what God's done for you and brought you out of. Give God glory. Yes. But don't stay there that, man, I've made it. I'm delivered. I'm not doing dope no more. I got the Holy Ghost. Like I got a job. I'm good now. I could just chill. Right. No. That's the unprofitable servant. Because he got that talent that got him thus far, but yet he became unprofitable, right? right? God says, I'll take that thing from you, give it to the man who denied himself and labored until I called him home. And then he got that abundance and that increase, glory to God. But you, you're going to go to outer weeping and gnashing of teeth. This thing is so real, but this spirit of slothfulness tries to come and sneak its way in. Right? Proverbs 21, verse 25. Yes, sir. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. Right? Look at even as the song was going this morning, I had it in some notes here of the, of the, of the versions. Make us ready. Let our fire not burn out. Mm -hmm. Foolish versions. Five of them, half of them were not ready. Right. Slothful. Right. They had some, right. but didn't have enough. Right. So they had a talent, but they didn't double it. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. They didn't keep laboring to go get that extra like the wise did. And the wise even came with a correction to him and said, Not be. You ain't getting <laughs> you ain't getting this. Right. I labored for this. I denied myself and went thus far to meet my bridegroom. Right. I love him this much that I went that extra mile to do to see him, right? But you wanted to be slothful. You wanted to remain in that place. Right. Now you may not make it. Right. It lines up. Right? But so how, how, but how Proverbs 21 and 25 says that his hands refuse to labor. Right? right? That, that, that the desire, so to go and to put the hands to the plow, it just kills a person that has that spirit abiding with him. Like, I got to do what? You want me to go and lift up and do again and again and again and again and to labor? Right? This spirit, though, it refuses. It doesn't want to. And it'll put so many emotions and thoughts and things onto the physical vessel of the person, right? right? To make them feel justified in that place. I've battled against this spirit. Lord knows how many of us have battled against this thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. This thing is real. Uh -huh. You can be anointed, uh -huh. filled with the Holy Ghost. It comes upon you. That's right. That's right. It's a common thing, as Elder Brian's saying. And you can feel justified to go and hide that talent in the earth because you've made it thus far. Right, that's right. And it's like, Lord, you want that much more out of me? You want that much more of this crushing from me? Because I already feel crushed. And Lord's like, I'm going to crush you more. Because it's not you, it's me in you. And you're getting in the way. The oil I have put in you has to come out more. It's done thus far and it's gone its way that I brought you to, but there's more to come. Yes. Right? Yes. 
You can have one oil, one bottle of oil, but if you're baking a certain amount of cakes, that ain't going to be enough. We got to have 20 cakes. We need another bottle. Right. right? The Lord says there's more manna to eat. There's more food to bake. There's more bread to break with the saints. There's more souls to even eat of that heavenly bread. There's more souls to eat of that heavenly bread, but it's going to take from that vessel to be crushed the more. Thank you, Lord. But the Spirit will try to make you feel Hallelujah. justified to not labor. Right? It'll make you feel like, I'm good. I don't, Lord, I don't have to labor. Right. Lord, haven't you seen what I've done this past year, the past month, the past week, the past hour? And God will say, yeah, but look to the future. Look what to the glory I set before you. You don't Hallelujah. even know what's right before you. And the Jesus. spirit of slothfulness is coming to try and stop you from gaining that glory to god so we gotta we gotta bind this spirit yes, we, we gotta say lord i gotta labor help me to labor lord yes, jesus lord. help me to labor yes, help me to labor yes. help me lord jesus yes, lord. right so going through some wisdom here proverbs 26 verse 13 through 16 brother can, can i ask you to read verse 26 also yes sir let me get there so we're uh proverbs okay proverbs 21 Yes, sir. Proverbs 21, verse 26. Yep, and, and, and divide that right where you started in Matthew and comparing the one that received one versus the one that had two or five. Mm. He coveteth greedily all the day long. Mm. Mm -hmm. But the righteous giveth and spareth not. Thank you, Jesus. Right? This, this coveting. Paul said, I would not have known coveting. Uh, I would not have known lust if the law had not said, thou shalt not covet. Right? right. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So this, this lust of a desire to sow into the flesh, to make your God, the, the God of your belly, your God, and you follow your own desires and your own ways, you'll covet after those things. Mm -hmm. Literally, you'll cut. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I've, I've looked to the place to where I, 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 I work a job now. I'm a normal person in society. I'm living for the Lord. I just want to go home and kick up my feet and relax and watch my little wholesome shows. Mm -hmm. right. And I feel so justified to do so. I've been digging trenches all day. Mm -hmm. But then God says, you have a wife and you have a family now, son. You got more to go. <laughs> Them days are in the past, son. Right. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, I should have I should have I should have been enjoying it more than I was back then, bro, because I wasn't enjoying it. So now it's game time. Jesus. But see, that spirit will try to, and no, but coveting that thing to be like, but I feel so justified. I just want to do this thing. Even showing Elijah, son, you can't covet after your toys where you come hit your brother to get that torque that you love it so much that it's my trash can. You ain't getting this. No, no, that's coveting that item, son. You should not, you should let him have it and give it to him and another one if you have it. Yes. Right. You can't covet the toys. You can't covet the TV. No. You can't covet even being slothful. Right. That's right. Because that thing is so comfortable, isn't it? Right. Mm. That thing is so comfortable. Mm. Mm. Yep. So the, the covet greedily all the day long. It's, it's, a, it's a greedy game. Mm -hmm. It's me, me, me. Right. What can I do to satisfy myself? Right. Instead of satisfying. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with me, right? I'm the example. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sticking to myself. I can speak for myself. Mm -hmm. I want to go and relax. So does my wife. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. She's been laboring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can feel justified to kick my feet up, but yet she should be esteemed higher than me. Mm -hmm. right? right? Esteem one another higher than yourselves. Mm -hmm. This is in many a ways. Right. right? And so, but yet, I have to deny myself. Yes. Put a knife to my throat of any of these appetites of these spirits that try to bring these things upon me and f to feel justified by. And to say, you know what, babe, I still, I, I got strength. God will give me the strength. What do I need to do? I need to eat some. I need to get some strength. Let me get into this labor the more. Roll up my sleeves. Do these dishes. Let's labor in this house. Let's put these children in order. Let's do this, right? Because I see that I'm, I, I got, I got much more of a labor to do, right? And I got to give unto her right? Spareth not. How much more do you have to give? Right. You want to talk about this, this today's mm. word? Mm -hmm. The man of God is in the house that, that, really, that really shows a lot of uh, counsel in this area by the wisdom of God and the grace of God that he's diligent with his labor in the home ministry everywhere, like I've said, right? And so there's, there's a lot that even he can attest to, I'm sure, against this, right? This spirit. Mm -hmm. But there's growth. There's growth that comes when you deny yourself. Mm -hmm. right. There's growth that comes when you say, you know what? I see the scripture. I feel the pricking of the Lord. He's pricking me up. 
I can't stay here no more and covered after this thing. Because that's what it is. I'm literally chilling with the spirit and I'm coveting to have these things when I see there's a need over here that I got to go and attend to. Right. right. I have to attend to it because if not, I'm becoming an unprofitable servant at this point. Right. right? I got to go and do this thing. God's telling me I have to. Right. There's no other way around it because if I don't do it, I will be that one that gets cast out. Right. right. Glory to God. And so you see this as, as it's all just lining up. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost throughout the whole word will show you example after example, after story, after witness, after testimony, and instruction and commandment in the Holy Ghost. Right. That this thing has to be seen for what it is, and we have to execute judgment on it. Right. And it's very simple how we execute judgment. We just move. That's it. That's it. You just got to move. <laughs> Do it. Don't, yeah, don't, don't overthink it. Right. You'll find your place. No, sorry, over. Don't overthink it. Just move. What, what do I got to do? Right? Amen. It's to the point now, glory. I give God the glory and by the grace of God, I'm just walking around looking for things, things to do to help my wife. Thank She's you. like, what are you doing? Thank She's like, everything's done. I'm like, all right, cool. I can show. Thank you know, we're good. She's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, all right, well, glory to God. But you got we got to get to that place where we're steady laboring. Yes. Steady laboring because God's seeing what are you doing. Yes. I've given you this. I've given, even if you don't have a house and a car and these things and children and wife and all that, what do we have now that God has given us? Right. Even our time. Because right. time is valuable. Yes. Like I've yes. said so many times, because when you get into a marriage and you have children, you see that time go. To, yes. Well, you ain't got that prayer time like you used to. You used to go, be able to go pray whenever you want. Right. You better enjoy that time with the Lord and grow in his grace and his presence. Right. You're going to miss that to the point where you're like, Lord. I thank you for what you've given me, but I used to spend that time with you. And Lord, that place was so beautiful. And now, Lord Jesus, right. I got to fight to get there. Right. How do we fight? I got to fight against my flesh. Right. Tired at 10 o'clock. You still got to go and press and seek the Lord. Right. Got to be up at 6 in the morning. Don't matter. You got to fight through that flesh. Right. That slothfulness is trying to keep you back from even seek, seeking God. Because then you labored all day, but now you got to go and labor in the world. you got to seek the Lord because he's, he's the heart's desire when it truly Amen, is. Bro. i got to see your face, Lord. i got to feel your presence today. I, I prayed a little bit, but it ain't like that secret place. Amen. So hey, i, I got to get through this flesh. i got to get to see you, Lord God, because I can't even do another day unless I get the feeling from you another again, Lord Jesus. Lord right? Lord and so... Proverbs 26, 13 through 16 says, The slothful man saith, There is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. Meaning, there's too much, out, too much harm. Put it in, in a simple text of this, of me being in the electrical field. That electricity can kill me, I'm not going to go work on it. <laughs> but make it play. That's it. True, it can kill me. Yeah. Oh yeah. I praise God that I'm still alive. There's right. been certain situations Amen. that by the grace of God, I'm still here working in the job I work. Right. But I can't go and be like, mm, that spirit of fear come up on me, then mm, you should just quit and go maybe find you know, all this other stuff. No, if God ain't telling me to leave, I ain't leaving. But I can't say, man, mm, that job, you know, it's going to kill me. I'm just not going to go. Right. No, nah, I'm not feeling it today. I want to live. Right. Right. <laughs> when God's saying, you better go to work, boy. Hey, verse 14, as the door turneth upon his hinges, right? How many times can this door turn? Count it. Talk to you in 10 years, you'll still be counting, right? As if, if God still has it up and ain't fall over, that thing will continually to turn, right? So as a door turns on his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. Right. Man, I ain't waking up. I ain't waking up. I ain't waking up nonstop because I'm just sowing into my flesh. Right? And the spirit of slothfulness is right here in this bed with right. me, just saying, come right. back to bed. Hit snooze. Right. Right. You know, you, 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 just, you can go in late today. Just You worked so hard yesterday, he'll understand. Right. No, I got to work as I'm to the Lord. I'm right. supposed to be on time. Thank, Thank Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right? Praise you, Lord. The slothful hideth Thank his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth, even just to move and just to feed himself. This thing can get that to that degree. I don't even want to feed myself no more. I want someone to feed me. Cut my steak. Yep, do this and feed me. Right? There's literally rich people in the world that have people feed them. Glory to God, brother. Or when it's upon their lust. Come on, bro. Brother, I got to testify of this. 
my kids and I, we were out at a, at a zoo, a local zoo, and they had a slaw. <laughs> and the slaw, and they had its food bowl. This, yes, like, sir. If this, if this was the food bowl, the sloth was like this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, talking about that spirit. I'm just, just talking about it. It, it wouldn't even, it's like so slothful to not even lift up its hand. Its head was right by the food bowl. It was just grabbing it with its tongue. I'm like, Lord Jesus, keep us far from the slothful. Spirit. Yes. Oh yeah, because that's to the degree it'll come to. It could get to that degree. If there's no order and no Holy Ghost in the house, well, even, I mean, the spiritualist tries to fight against it, right? Because then if the man takes heed to it, then the woman, if they're married, takes heed to it, then they can feel justified just to keep taking heed to it to where you come slothful like the sloth in the zoo that don't even want to pick up its own food, like the scripture said. Right. The scripture says this is truth. That testimony is truth. It's true. It's true. God hates that spirit. And he hates it Amen. because it's unprofitable. Right? Right? Right. It's so unprofitable. Um, remember about all comments until the end. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory to God. Love you, God. Love you. That it bring it agree with him to even bring his hand into his mouth, right? The sluggard is wiser. Look at this. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. Meaning that the man that is sluggard and does not want to work in physically and spiritually, for real, because we're, we're in the church, right? That he's wiser than any man that can come and give him instruction and order. I don't need to receive that counsel. I don't need to receive that, that godly order. No, I'm good because why? I have justification. I have reasons and I could show you an X, Y, and Z. And then there's that contention. Why? Because if you get to it, that would become prideful. But then, then, so he's wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. And these, re these reasons that the seven men can give are reasonable and true. Right. And he'll be like, nope, I'll exceed all of that. But what that is is correction. Right, brother? You got this. You got that. You got everything you need to do X, Y, and Z. Let's right. go do it. Right. But then the slug will say, nah, bro, I'm, I don't because I have X, you know, ABC over here. Mm -hmm. So I'm justified to hold on to this compared to doing that. My own conceit makes me, I esteem my conceit better than the wisdom of God. Right. Keeps going, right? Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes 10, 18 says, By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. Mm -hmm. right. This scripture hit me hard. Right. right? Because there's a lot of attention that needs to be on this physical house that we're abiding in right now. Right? Sometimes it feels completely overwhelming, yes, and all these things, you know, finances, all this, whatever. Mm -hmm. But God is so faithful, he makes a way. And God says, yeah, but what do you have to your own ability to do now, right? And this is, it comes down to even just landscape, right? Like sometimes, man, those, those weeds are about to pop up out back. <laughs> One time I let them grow because I said I like how green it is instead of looking at dirt. I'm like, they're beautiful. It was so green out back. I'm, like, I'm in Florida. But then it came down, it kept growing. I'm like... I got to take care of him now. Right. Now that we were so thick and stocked that I had to like yank the, my weed eater was not doing nothing. I had to now labor harder right. to get the weeds out right. because I thought it looked good. God says, no, you got to stay up on these things. Right. right. So from right. that happening, which could go trees, you know, roots can go and bust pipes. So you keep going into the physical, but even just the maintaining of the physical building, right? The slothful, it'll decay. Literally the stuff will, de it'll just fall apart one way or another. Through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through, right? But God's so good, even when a house is decaying and, and the house literally is, the foundation is moving, God will give you the, the, the wisdom and, the, and the, the capability to make these adjustments, right? That the house stays up by the grace of God. But the whole context of this is slothfulness, right? By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. Amen. Right. And God is looking at how we're treating with what we have right now. And even to even how much, right, we have physical houses, but then also right. to the temple, as we were speaking of in the yes. car ride today, right? Slothfulness right. of taking care of the temple. Right. This thing, right. man, this is another, this is another level of pressing. Right. Because you're so used to eating how you want the, not any diet at all. That was me. I lived off of sugar for real. And to go and to clean up, you're going to feel a, uh, a cut. You're going to feel a withdrawal. You're going to feel some, mm, some discomfort. Right. But when you get your temple in order, your body in order, right. 
right. you're going to reap the benefit right. sooner than later. Right. You really are. Because the, the, you'll feel like, mm, how long do I have to feel this way? When am I going to start feeling, you know, more energy or healthy or strong? All these right. things, right? Like, when is this fatigue going to leave? Just keep fighting and pressing through because the victory is going to come. Right. And you're going to have, right? You, you, you take care, well, what am I eating? What's in these ingredients, right? right? And then you don't just do it for a day or two. You start to see it as a lifestyle. Right. It's a life because our body is living, right? It's not just a short period of time. And I love, I love how the church goes into fast. And when you go into these fasts for the X amount of time, or you go deeper, or you, you know, but when you go as a family is where the Lord really used to highlight. And even as pastor brought, you know, no sugar during this fast, zero. Right. You know, I praise God that we were prepared before that. Amen. We already went through our withdrawal with that, but it'll make you think of these things to a different degree. Like, man, I got to do better than just taking two weeks off this stuff. Like, I got to, I got to really watch what I'm putting in my temple continuously, Right. And so God be glorified, amen. Even though certain things are more expensive to take care of the body, God will provide, right? Just seek what you have, right? Well, Lord, I got $10. How am I going to go to Whole Foods when they're, I can't buy it? You know, this stuff's expensive there. $10 ain't going to get you that far, right? But go, God will just line you up and they'll just see a little thing on, on, on sale, right? This little discount over there. And God will just piece the puzzle together, right? You just use what you have with your own talent, with your own capability, well, with the capability that God gave you. And God will bless you, right? So from the physical building of laboring, amen, to our temple laboring and diligently keeping, right? Because it's easier to go and spend $10 on a bunch of stuff from Walmart right. that'll fill up the pantry super quick. But then you're feeling weak. You're feeling fatigued. You're feeling tired. And now the spirit of slothfulness comes and hits you. Right. Man, you're going to feel like reading one chapter in the Bible? Brother. Nope. You're going to say, Lord, I'll do it tomorrow. Read our brother Proverbs 23 and 21. A witness. Yes, sir. Proverbs 23 and verse 21. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, Lord Jesus, and drowsiness. Drowsiness. This is it. That's what you just said. Shall clothe a man with rags. This drowsiness in the temple, right? It's, it's being, well, so he's saying being for the drunkard, right? Being in excess of these things, being in excess and, 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 and lost in them, right? When you're drunk, you're, man, ooh, what's, everything's all good. You're drunk, everything's all good. I, you know, ain't nothing going to be bad. I, I, I'm feeling good, right? But it's in the spirit, it's in the body to where I can keep eating my Cheetos, my nachos, my, 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 my French fry, all this stuff that we know these oils are disgusting. You start to look into to, to doctors and stuff that have this, this, this knowledge that show what they do to the body and what happens and how it breaks you down. And then you feel all this type of way and how your, your glucose and all this stuff. It's like, wow, this thing, this, this is a science that God put together in our body. And it's, and it's perfectly formulated to operate the way he made and created it to be. But when the vessel chooses not to do what he's given us to keep that thing abiding in that way, we're going to reap that consequence of it. And again, here comes the spirit, right? But it's being drunk in those things. I was once that person. I would go to, I would go to Walmart. I get them little tiny 50 cent pies. I said 50 cents. I get stacks. I would take them to work and I would eat them for breakfast. And I would feel nasty a little bit after. And my, my, man, my body, I'd be, and I was heavy labor. Every day was such a struggle. But then cleaning up the diet, I, I feel better. Right. You know? And I'm like, Lord, this is, this is what it is. Right? But this drowsiness. And drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Right? That's not glory. No. Right? That's rags. Right. right. And, and even that goes to even poverty. Right. Rags is poverty it compares to. So you see that as God has clothed us, clothed us and clothed us in his glory and that we should maintain this garment and not be drowsy with the spirit of slothfulness that we put on rags over God's glory. God Amen. forbid. Right. So we start to see this in the spiritual, how it all lines up and God is against this thing. He wants his people to be blessed and to prosper even as our souls. prosper. It says be blessed and be in health. Right. Be right. prosper and be in health. Yes. Right. Even as your soul prosper. Amen. So God is completely against these spirits, but this worldliness, the world system, how it's, how it's, 
how it's set up to cater to the flesh to every T and every degree with the fast food drive through every left, every right. Right. And then you look at to the highlight of who owns these companies. Oh, majority of these people, they own. I mean, uh, 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 this group of people own all these chains of fast food. And then they also have their hands in the medical field. And it goes hand in hand with sickness and disease and all this stuff. And they're making money off the food, poisoning you. And then they're making money off the pharmacy and all the other pharmaceuticals that they pump into you that do nothing good for the temple on either end. So this is spiritual. And the spirit of fear will try to keep you right. The spirit of fear will try to keep you from multiplying your talent in the Lord. He said, just hide that thing. Mm, keep doing what you're doing. Don't do none of that. No, but then this is when the spirit has to rise up in us and say, let God be true and every man a liar. Every man a liar. Every, every form of counsel that I've received that is coming against the word of God, I have to rebuke and reject and cast it down. Everything that I would even I would, I would justify myself with when scripture comes against it, I have to cast it down. Glory to the Lord. Right? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so even just a few more scriptures on, on speaking of this, Romans chapter 12, verses 10 through 11. Right? The scripture says, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. Amen. In honor preferring one another. Amen. Right? Right. And then it comes to verse 11, not slothful in business. Right. Right? And so this literally... The Bible addresses spiritual, physical, building, maintaining all these things, and also business. Yes. Right? And this is actually goes to what we need to have, what we need, right? God provides all things, and he makes a way and opens up the doors, but he says, don't be slothful in business. Right? Right? And, and so, speaking of myself, I could feel justified, and it's come up on me so many times. And the Lord will say, you got to get up, son. And I, I've done so much labor for the boss and all these things. I got my list taken care of and I can just kick back a little bit. And the Lord will say, you got it. You can't be slothful in business. There's still something for you to do. Go do it. Right. And this way I said, I got to say, God, you be glorified. Please give me the strength. You know, if I found my spot, if I find myself in that spot chilling there for a little bit and I didn't, I didn't catch it. Right. Because there's nothing wrong with taking a little break from time to time. Right. Well, we got to get this right balance too. We're going to bring this in. The, we're we're going to bring this all in the balance because. Yeah, the Lord is good. Amen. Sure is. But when we have our job in our business place, right? If we don't want to be seen sitting down by our boss watching through a camera, what are you doing on the clock and you're sitting there? What are you doing? I'm paying you, right? And if we're going to jump as we should to do the right thing for our boss, it's really as unto the Lord. Right. So we can't be slothful in business. He says, go trim that tree, go do this, go do this, right? Go do X, Y, Z. I got to do all these tasks. Right. And, 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 and not be slothful in it, because then you'll find the other laborers in the field milking the clock, taking their time. Right. I've been there, done that, all that. Yeah. You just, you know, I'm justified to get a bigger check and I'm not even working how I should to even get what I'm getting paid now. Like all that's garbage is of the wicked one. When you be right, you can't be like them. They're of the world. But when you see you're in, in, the, in the Lord, you got to work as it's unto the Lord. God will see it. God will bless you. And God will open up your boss's eyes to see it and then reward you according to your labor. Thank you, Lord. Right. So he says, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, right. serving the Lord. Amen. Right. And so another, a few more scriptures. I'm going to go down real quickly. Proverbs chapter 10, verse four. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, right? A hand that doesn't want to continuously be to the plow, that doesn't want to continue to labor, that wants to have every excuse and refuse instruction and counsel is going to become poor. Right. Right. The Bible says it. Of course. And we see it in the world, it's, it's evidently so, right? You see even, yeah, the man may be homeless and on drugs on the corner, but brother, go work. Right? Go work. He don't want to work. Right? Right? And right. I remember when I was in a, in a bad place here in Tucson, bad place. The Lord was, I remember it was the Lord on the street and how this is all happening. It's a long story, but basically I was tired of being sick and tired. And I said, man, I told one of the men I used to roll around with, I said, man, I, I would just want to go get a job, bro. I just want to go and get money. That's just a, a normal job, just to be able to eat and to have the normal things in life and not have to go and steal and do these things, right? And, but I was like, but I got this addiction hindering me and I, I'm dope sick and I can't move without my dope and all these things, right? So it was garbage, but God delivered me from that, 
right? But even even in that state, because I was there, right? Because, oh, well, I've been through this, been through that, but yet I know what it's like to be there. But yet there's also men on the corner, the man that wanted to wash our windshield the other day. There's homeless that will say, hey, well, can I earn a dollar? Sure. Right. I honor that more. But then even then, I'm like, bro, I'll give you some food or something before money. Right. I know where you're at, bro. Your dope. I don't want. I can't give you money to go buy dope. Right. I'll give you something else to benefit your body. Right. I'll pray for you. I'll, here's a church card, right? But I, I, I honor that and other men that we've seen here in Tucson that will do something to labor to earn their money instead of just asking for it, begging for it, right, right. or whatever the case is, right? Because it's slothful. Right, so the slack hand becometh poor, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. That scripture right there will go to a degree that God will give you grace and strength to to be more diligent than you even fathomed. Um, Literally, I see it with with men of God right that are in my life, and I've seen it as God's grown uh, grace in my own life. I've had to I had to just deny myself of these things and see when the Spirit comes because it'll come when you're super tired. It'll come when you're super tired and be like, hold up, but I still got stuff to do. I got I to gotta keep pressing. I got to keep going. And then not, once you find what was a struggle last for however long, it'll be nothing. It'll be a part of your daily routine now. So now you multiplied, you know, the two into four. And now you're, you're, you're growing by the grace of God, right? And so it's being diligent and God will reward you, right? Richly in the spirit. Right, richly in the spirit, and yeah, with, with physical things, right, with, with even of a finance and increase, but you can't make the, you know, you got to have that balance. Right. Because you start to esteem that thing and say, oh, I made it, Lord, thank you, Jesus. You know, the business blows up and you get all this money, and you come slack in the spirit. The scripture says that they'll make, the witches will make themselves wings and fly away. God will show that them things are not going to be in your life. It's going to take you out of the way, right, of, of the way of salvation. First yeah. Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. Amen. Another scripture I've spoken of recently. But if any man provide not for his own and especially, uh, I'm sorry, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith. Right. Mm-hmm. Worse than an unbeliever. Yes, and is worse than an infidel. So the Lord is very serious about our labor. Right. Sure is. We've talked, we've touched on so many different aspects already, but he's so serious about our labor and he's looking at how we're handling things to every degree and every manner and how much more profitable we can be. We have 24 hours in the day. We get however many hours we get for sleep. He's looking at what we could do with those times and he's, he's giving us vision and insight with it. But what are we doing with it? Right. He really truly is. He still gives me, I'm like, Lord, like, Lord, help me. Just be real with the Lord. Say, Lord, help me. And then get up and do it. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. We were working this last. It's been busy at work, right? Slammed, and we had to we had to pull all this all this stuff from a huge job site out of a Connex. Amen. And I'm already so tired, and and a man I'm working with, it was really the the Lord was using him to even speak this to me. Lord help. That that. He said, you know, Josh, I just don't even look at how much stuff is in there and how much work it is because then I start getting tired just looking at it. We know what that looks like. He says, I just do it. I said, that's right, Leo. I said, that is the wisdom of God that just go and do it. Because once you just start doing it, then you get your blood flowing and now you're going and you're good and you got energy, you're doing it. And then you're looking like, man, I got half of it done. Now you get the rest of it done. It's like, man, that didn't take two days. It took four hours. So you just work with it and be diligent with it. Amen. And everything, don't overthink the things. The overthinking of the things becomes a time of an area where slothfulness creeps in. And then you become stagnant. And then you don't want to do it. Right? Right? Too many testimony. I could testify to that. And God has has dealt with me in that. No, you can't. You just got to keep moving. That's why God has order. Like we were speaking of in the car today, there's an order. And when God grows us in in multiplying these talents, we want to continue to have that multiply increase that we've had thus far. But as we continue to grow too, meaning that the order that he's brought us to and the diligence that we've done, we maintain that thoroughly. And if he shows us where we can increase, then we have to incorporate that. But then you look at it from a a month basis or a yearly basis. Man, last year, you know, we only did this much. But now this next year, you know, of being diligent where God's brought us to, 
there's so much more fruit, you know, here, there, and here, and there with the children and prayer, right? And all these things, even in business, right? There's gain here. So we can see how the scripture says he make it the diligent or to make it to be rich, right? right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank so another you. witness, the second uh, Thessalonians chapter three, verse 10, right? For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Right. 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 And so this lines up with, with what was written in Timothy previously spoken on, right? That denied the faith. That's, that's pretty serious when you really think of this. That scripture, I, I jumped over that, Lord, please forgive me. First Timothy 5, 8 saying that if you don't provide for your own, your own and of your house, that you're denying the faith. Yeah. So how can we be so right in our own our own conceit to say, oh, I'm faithful, I'm serving God, but yet then we don't do this part of the scripture. Right. And then the scripture says, it says that it, you, 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 it's condemnation that you're believing and living in because you're not exercising this part. Right. Right. You could be so spiritual and say, I don't need to work. But then the scripture says, that, well, you've denied the faith. That you could get so to that place that you, that you, you you're, you're so into whatever, you know, whatever it could be. And glory sure. to God, right? Sure. But that you actually fall, fall away from this commandment. Right. Because it was commanded in Second Thessalonians. This we commanded you. Right. So that doesn't give an option and a room to budge and to error. And, well, it would be error if you go a different way. Right? But we have to work. And so God forbid that that we feel justified into a place that we don't need to work, right? Because there's so many other ways and things that could come, right? Well, you work in the world, you work with worldly people, you, right. you know, what is the business doing over, it's, man, it keeps going in different circles. We don't got to worry about all that. If we're in a place of business where I'm not selling dope, I'm not working in the strip club, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, and it ain't straight sin that you can just blatantly see, right? And it, and it is sinful that is against God, mm -hmm. I'm going to be in that place, Amen. right? If I go work at Safeway and they sell alcohol, I can work at Safeway. Yes, you can. Right? right. Sure. I'm justified on the side of God. Right. Sure. Yeah, they serve alcohol and there's alcoholics. I could know that alcohol that comes in every day. I, I pray for him, right? Mm -hmm. And be there. Be a light in that place. Right. But that doesn't mean if I'm working there and there's the transaction, right, and I, I'm doing my job that I'm condemned. No, not at all. Right? right? I've shared that testimony too. It's like even being an electrician, I go fire up someone's house, what they do in that house is on them. Right. Yeah. Truth. What I did on my part was legal and, and lawful on the side of God. Amen. Right? right? What they do in there with that electricity is on them. Sure. Now, so there's a proper balance with it. So, but these things are things that people fight against for real, right? That, well, there's this, that, there's this, that, the other, and the third. Just get in the Holy Ghost and see what, it, what, is, what is justified in the Lord and that not let the devil use those things of the world to try and keep you from operating and working. Because the scripture says... He had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel, right? An unbeliever. Right. Amen. And so another witness, Colossians 3.23. This is, this is where we have to be anchored in our diligence and in our labor. Colossians 3.23. This goes, applies to everything. The spiritual, the physical, the taking care of the body, the house, everything. Our jobs, marriages, children. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. As to the Lord and not unto men. Yes. Truth. This scripture will keep you keeping a job. Because <laughs> when your boss comes and talks sideways to you, yes. and you're like, excuse me? <laughs> and you're ready to straight walk out. Sure. And God says, stay. Yep. <laughs> and your flesh burns. you got to feel that fire and stand in it. And you got to say, God, you're going to be glorified in this situation right. because I myself am ready to leave and you know it. But you're telling me to stay and it's for a reason bigger than me. I'm going to do it because why is doing it as unto you, Lord, right? right. Thank you. As unto you, Lord. And it's going to do things in the mix of that that God will do, right? He'll be like, well, why? The boss will be like, why is this guy staying here? That don't even make sense. Like right. uh, he should have hit me in the face or something crazy, right. but he's standing there. He's, right. he's still speaking cool to me. He's peaceful. Right. He's He's blessing me. He's actually still working diligently. <laughs> you know, because because then the boss will be like, "Well, now he's going to be slothful for the next month because I just said that to him." This is what happens. Right. But then now the man of God doing it as unto the Lord is still diligent. Like, That's right. he says he's a Christian. Oh, this, I I ain't seen this type of Christian. 
right? Because there's a lot of lukewarm. There's a lot of people that lack understanding, yes. But then there's a lot of people that don't want to fight against the spirit is what it comes down to, right? right? Because you've got to fight against this thing. And that's, another good opera, that's another good situation right there where the boss do something like that. Then you feel right in your own conceit, lawful to be slothful in that place of business. And God says, yeah, but you've got to do everything as unto me, son, right? right? And that, that spirit will come and speak those lies to you. Right. It's, it's a lying devil. No, nope, I got to do it as, as, as it's unto the Lord. And the scripture says whatsoever. Right. This goes into everything. Thank you, Jesus. Everything. We can't overlook things and, and have a false balance in one area to another. The scripture says whatsoever. Right. right. And so another another place that the Lord led me to will go to is Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verses 42 through 48. Thank you, Lord. So Luke chapter 12, verse 42. And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household Amen. Glory, hallelujah. to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Amen. Right. God's coming back to see do we got faith. Yeah, well, what are we doing with our faith? Right. Are we laboring? Are we being diligent? Because we can say we're faithful all day like the five foolish. Right. But the five wise were still diligent mm -hmm. and still had faith. Seeking his face. Right. And so verse 44, of a truth, I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But and if that servant say in his heart, right, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be drunken, right? Basically to give up and to not be diligent in the Lord and to just go in excess of these things. As even the scripture just says right there, to that manner of degree, right? Great wickedness is what that is. Right. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and at an hour when he is not aware, right? Like a thief in the night right. and will cut him in sunder, Lord Jesus, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. With the unbelievers. Right? So this, this again, there's so much we know the one saved, always saved is completely erroneous, false doctrine. Right. Just right here, this shows it's completely false thus far. On, Amen? And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself. Right? So there's this slothfulness. Right. Of knowing the Lord's will and not preparing yourself. That's the error right there. Neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. Once it, this thing is so real that it's, there's a warning right there. There's, there's this of the Lord that, that when people come and they hear the word or they get baptized, I tell them, brother, you got you to continue on the way. You got to continue on the faith. You got to continue to abide with the church. It's salvational because you get to the place that even though what you've known thus far and you go back to sin, you're going to be, you could get to this place of you'd be beaten with more stripes than if you were just remaining in the world, not even baptized and seeking God. This thing gets more serious. It doesn't get easier, right? Easier meaning that you're going to get more of a, uh, more, more of a grace to do what you want is what I'm saying. It gets easier in the spirit by the grace of God, yes, mm -hmm. but not to the place where you could just willfully do whatever you want and be slothful. Oh, no, no. It's the exact opposite. God says it's time to take it up and make back all that time you was living in the world, right? right? To redeem the time because the days are evil. Yes. This, is where that's like, yes. this is where that spirit says, no, don't do that. Just hang out. Just be tight. You know, you're, you're, you're saved. Just you and your house will be saved. Stop there, right? Yeah. You know? You know, don't let that anointing come flowing out into others' lives that they would hear and see the light and be saved in the truth, right? That's what that spirit says. Let's go Jesus. Right? So, but, so this is where that slothful, he, so he prepared not himself and didn't do according to the will. He's going to be beaten with many stripes. This is, this is a place that we cannot allow ourselves to come into, into place to be. How to think that we would stand before God and be... Well done, and it's the exact opposite. Ain't no well, nothing coming. It's what have you done? What did you do with your time? Come on, bro. We think it's a well, so no, it's a what? It's a whoa, oh, whoa, oh, oh, Lord. What did you do with what I had given you? And, this, and then the flashback just start playing before your eyes. Look at here where you could have done better. Look at here where you just gave up and you didn't. Look at to where, 
all this time that I was wanting to redeem through you and you chose not to do it because you wanted to sow into your flesh, you hid that talent. I was going to give you more even. Right. I was going to bless you and make you a ruler already down on the earth with what you had. And I was going to give you more. Glory to God. And then I was going to appoint you into here, the kingdom, right? Where he, that he abides in, my Lord Jesus. So we see how this thing gets so much more serious. God forbid we hear those words, right, of, of, of what the Lord is saying here. Verse 48, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes, right? For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. A man of God I work with that says that 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 said this one time it was the Lord through him and it's true and this is where I was saying earlier of health of sight of movement of limbs right it's true you go and you see people in a wheelchair and you're like man they're restricted to a degree right I have two legs I have arms mm -hmm. I could do so much more than them and that's just with how I'm made and what I have and with brother. God's grace and knowledge and wisdom, brother. Brother. how much, how much, how much God has put into a vessel to go and to be so destructive to the kingdom of darkness. Brother. But yet we take that, that anointing, we take the vessel, we take everything that God's given us, which is many of talents when we look into it and we decide not to do nothing with it. Now we can really understand this frustration that God would get. Right. Right. Because it even makes sense to us, like, what? You know, you start to get grief in your heart. You see people in a wheelchair and this and that. But man, I, I'm healthy, I got, and God's healing me, and I'm getting stronger, and I got, I got the wisdom, and I got the anointing, and the whole, I got all this that God has given to me, and what am I doing? Glory to God. Amen. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him much shall be required. Amen. So we can't think of it strange when God wants to require more of us. Thank you, Jesus. Let us find comfort in this scripture right here that yes. God is going to want more from us and it's going to be required. And to whom uh, and to whom to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. Yes. Right. And it's true. You know, a, a man that's diligent in labor and doing these things, men are going to go on to seek. Right. Even in the workplace, this applies to, you know, he's faithful. He shows up on time. He does this. He, he gets the job well done. That's going to be, hey, bro, we need you to go. We need you to go. Yeah, but yeah. the man that's slothful, the man that don't show up on time, the man that's not coming in, that, that don't have his tools and this and that, mm, brother, right. your hours are going to get cut. Right. But faithful, bro, we got a lot of work to go do. Yeah. Right. It's the same thing in the spirit. It's the same thing in the spirit with the Lord. Right. And so we look at this now slothful and obedience. This is this. So there's, there's so many angles. I'm just going to stick to what the Lord put together with me in my notes. Slothful in obedience. Right? This is something that I've fallen short of. Absolutely. And God has chastised me for right. it. And I have to seek for His grace and, and His strength. Yes, amen. And grow from those things. And don't look to those things which are behind you. Right? Oh. He was, Elder Brian was, was just instructing my child yesterday in the playground just to Forget those things which are behind you and press to that which is new and before you and, 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 and grow, right? Don't, don't live in a fear of a thing, of a failure of the past. That fear of that failure will try to keep you from moving forward. Don't go, right? Remember what happened? Just remember what happened. You don't want this to happen again, do you? But God's so good by His grace. He gives us the truth and the instruction, the rebuke, and then His grace comes to correct us and give us that, that, that break from there. Right? And we can snap off that spirit and bind it in Jesus' name. And walk in the power of his might. And have the counsel of God to know what to do. So slothful in obedience, if we've fallen short in times past, let's just pick it up and just be more swift. Amen. This diligence is in physical and in the spiritual. Just be more swift. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's go. Right? The, the faster you execute judgment of yes and being diligent, the more second hand, second nature, right? It just is it just is in you to do it time and time again. Amen. You don't have that fight no more. You yes. just you just do it. You just go. Thank right? You. And this is where God is wanting us to be, right? That yes. we're the five wise that have that Not oil and extra oil. Okay. But I'm looking back into the scripture, amen, in first Samuel chapter 15. Amen. Right? And so uh very, very familiar passage of scripture, right? So first Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 through 23 is all right here. Hey, right, amen. And Samuel said, right, after that, 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 
that taking heed to the people and taking of the spoil right. And there was that sin and that transgression because it went against what God said. Yeah. Right? Which was obedience. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Come on, bro. Right? We can feel justified even as Saul to where, well, you know what? I've done a great work for the Lord and I've done so much thus far. I'm just going to put in probably like 200 on my tithe extra right. this time and I'm going to make up for my disobedience this past week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to... Or I'm going to do this instead of that, right? But when God said to do this, he didn't say to do that. Right. We, can, we can think of a way to make up for what God said that we failed in. Right. But God's saying, but no, I really wanted you to do this. Because first of all, it's obedience. And second of all, I was going to do something powerful through that. Mm. And you, you did your own thing. So it, it, ain't, it ain't working out now, is it? Right? He'll, 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 he'll make an example out of you real quick. And he'll show you. Look at the fruit of what you sowed was in the, of your own, your own wisdom and it didn't go that far, did it? Right. So if you would have walked in my wisdom and took in heed to my, my, my word and what I said in obedience to this, you know, he'll even give you a little vision and insight. Look at how I would have done this. Right. And then you just repent from that. Right. We're in the grace. Right. We're in God's grace. Repent from it and say, Lord, I see now. Lord, please forgive me of this. Right. I could have I could have been 10 steps forward right now if I would have done this move in your in your way that you instructed me. But I see where I'm at, Lord. I thank you. I thank you for your chastisement, right? I thank you for your correction. And so again, has, has the Lord have any uh, delight, uh, as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken. Mm, that's exactly where it's at. Hearken. Hearken. Because when the Holy Ghost speaks something, we have a choice to be slothful and slow to the obedience, but the scripture says, hearken. Hearken means, what'd you say? Listen. Listen, right? What, what was that, Lord? That you're more attentive. Right. You're, yes, Lord, right? It's not that pause and that gap in of some time and time and by, by again and by again later. It's hearkening. Yes, Lord. Very attentive to what he's saying, right? And to hearken than the fat of rams, right? Listen unto the Lord, obey what he says, right? So verse 23 says, right? For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. These are spirits, spirit of rebellion, spirit of stubbornness, spirit of slothfulness. This is all spiritual. It was carnal in the old time and it was written for our example and God gives us the understanding that these are spirits. Right. And this is how we fight our good fight of faith in the New Testament with Ephesians chapter six. And and we go on and, and, and so forth. Right. That. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So being stubborn and hearkening unto the Lord. Right. Is 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 sinful. And even becomes we, we can make our own selves become an idol because we put our own ways and our own thoughts and desires before the Lord. Right. Truthfully, but we make our own selves an idol. Right. And many have fallen into this condemnation right. where God's word comes and instructs them. But they're a pastor and they've got this and they've got followers and they've got a big church and it's so blessed and increased on all ends. But yet they're not obeying the word of the Lord. Mm. They've become an idol before God and they've they've exalted themselves before the word of God. And we know that the only thing that's going to stand when he returns that, that'll, that'll never pass away. Right. Is the word of God. So if we want to live with him eternal, we have to line up with his word that we will find ourselves in that same state that we will not perish, right. but that we will reign with him eternally because his word will never go. Right. So he says, hearken to my word, right? Thank you, Jesus. It's the spirit of God. It just keeps going and going. Right. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. But then the scripture says, though, right? Those who were, those who were diligent in their labor and multiplied and increased with the talents, he made them rulers over all that they had, right? right? They're not, so he, he'll make you a king of what you have now, right? And a ruler over much. But if you don't want to hearken and you're slothful in obedience unto the Lord, he won't put you there, right? right? He'll give you the opportunity. Right. That's a beautiful thing. God will give you the opportunity. But what we do with it when we have it, that determines what, what, where we're going to be at after, right? Where, where God would have us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Isaiah chapter 48, verses 17 through 18. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 
Mm -hmm. Isaiah 48, chapter, uh, chapter 48, 17 through 18. Thank you, Lord. This is, this is hearkening unto the Lord, right? Listening and being attentive. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord God, the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit. See, this is where, this is where with the talents, well, Lord, how do I do this? The scripture says, the Lord God, which teacheth thee to profit. He'll teach us how to profit with the talents that he's given us. Right. He'll teach us how to, yes, live right and everything, but how to profit is what I'm getting to with what he's given us. Right. Which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. We have to continue to seek him in which way to go, how to maneuver in all ways and avenues, right? Like, Lord, what's, I see the season of my life. Lord, give me a greater insight of what season I'm really in. Where is my labor at and how do I need to be more attentive here? And, and God will show you because he'll teach you how to profit. He'll show you in the way to go. Verse 18, right. oh, that thou hast hearkened, haddest, sorry, that thou haddest hearkened to my commandments, then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. When we hearken unto the Lord, unto his commandments, when we, when we seek after him and he guides our steps, he teaches us how to profit, all this keeps tying together. Our, the, it's not our peace, it's the peace of the Lord will come to us as a river. Right? So what the devil will make on the outside before really digging in, as it's overwhelming, it's too much weight to bury, how are you going to do all that garbage, right? But when you just press through and you bind that spirit and you keep going in the, in the way and the commandment of the Lord, You'll have peace the whole time. <laughs> right. You'll have victory and increase. Right. You'll start to see gain on all sides. Like, wow, right. Lord, this increase is all of you because right. I didn't even know the wisdom how to do it. First right. of all, like right. literally, that's my that's my testimony working my job. Right. I don't know how to do not. I don't know how to do it. Right. But God, He He just showed me, right. and then I would learn from so and so. He just showed me how. All right, take this from there. And, okay, all right, and then you just keep going and going and going. It's like, okay, Lord, now I see that. You know, you, you, you even made me a manager into the position of, at the place of, of, of the work. How was that? I started off digging trenches for $13 an hour. Right. Mm -hmm. How, it's, it's by God. Right. And by the time the times I was going to quit from the testimonies I was speaking of briefly earlier, God said to stay. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Man, tell you what, I picked up my phone. I was calling my boss to say, I'm done, bro. I appreciate the job. I'm going to go. I'm going to find something else. And as I picked up that phone, he said, stay. I'll never forget that burning in my flesh. It wanted to quit so bad. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I was so justified to do it. But, right, everything is unto God. Right. And when there, was, when there was no peace in that time, peace now came. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. God delivered. Now there's peace in my job place to where there's like joy. It used to be grievous to go into work, full of anxiety, full of stress, Full of all this wickedness and blast. Oh man, it's, it's so bright. But there was a fight. There was a warfare is what I'm getting to. I had to fight daily. I had to be diligent against these spirits daily. I, it was just a great warfare. But now through all that labor, there's this peace that God gives. And I'm saying even in the workplace, in our homes, I come home and there's, there's, a, there's a river of peace of the Lord here with my wife. And even with the children, when I'm away, God's peace is still here. Right when I'm in the workplace or when I'm driving, there's this peace because it's this, it's this honoring of God's word. Amen. And that he gives us what we thought we weren't going to have if we were going that far with these talents. God says, I'm going to give you that peace. Right? right? It's going to be like you're sitting on the San Diego beach and you have the waves. And you're, just, <laughs> you're on vacation. You know, and it's like, Lord, you're so good. Right. Times is warfare. You ain't going to feel like you feel that peace. Well, you got to get back into the Holy Ghost and gain, Right. Get back in Psalms and hymns, sing unto the Lord, right? You do what the scripture says to get that back that joy, right. and it will be restored unto you because there is a warfare against this. Right. And the warfare is to get you out of being diligent to go back to being slothful, right? right? So we got to see, where am I at? Right. Okay, well, I'm not feeling the peace now. Well, is you in warfare. Let's talk about what's going on, right? right? right. So let's look at some, some scriptures that the Lord led me to just to, to strengthen us in this, this area, right? That the Lord will strengthen us. It's Psalms 28, verse 7. Glory to God. Psalms 28, verse 7 declares, The Lord is my strength and my shield. Thank you, Jesus. Right? So this is not of our own. Yes, we subject ourselves. We, we submit ourselves unto God, right? We obey, yes. But that's our reasonable service, as the scripture says. Mm -hmm. 
Right, it, it really is. It's our reasonable service. But it's the Lord that strengthened us and is our shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Right? So the Lord will help you individually. Right? Because, yeah, there's a husband and the wife and they are one. But then there's still an individual help that has to come from God to that husband. An individual help that has to come to that wife. And when they're not together, it's a different, you know, the, 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 the separation from work and then the home. There's a help that will come individually to the, into the children. Mm -hmm. God will help and bring. I am help, the scripture says. Right, Elijah? You go into prayer, right? You pray to God and you feel the Lord. You get quickened in the spirit because the Lord, the Lord is faithful to his word. You are helped. To do what? To listen to mommy, to listen to daddy, to love on your brother, to do what is right. Right? Right. 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 And you, you can testify to that. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. Right. right? We can rejoice in this. We can rejoice because it's God's strength. He's going to help us. And with my song, will I praise him? Right? Thank you, Lord. Psalms 34, verse 4. I'll just, I'll just go down a little bit swifter. Psalms 34, verse 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. All means all. Yes. There is not one of these little devils that will try to sneak in, mm -hmm. but that can't mm -hmm. because it says all. That's right. right. Anxiety, stress, fear, all, all those different things, all the, all the different things that the world would say, all my fears. Well, Lord, what about this? As we're speaking of, you know, what about this? What about that? Family members, right? These things come. Well, what about something happens to my wife and this, that, the other, and the third? I'm not going to trip out about it because right. it'll get overwhelming quick. Brother. Right. right? This thing happens to me when going evangelizing with just me and Steph and the baby alone. And this man walking swiftly upon the van. I'm like, hold up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, what's going on over there? Mm -hmm. I can't evangelize and do this. What's going on? And thank God nothing was going on, but it's, it, it'll, get, it'll get you so overwhelmed that it'll make you just want to be slothful mm -hmm. and give up, right? right? So God says, he'll deliver us from all of our fears. We don't need to worry. We don't need to worry about what's going to happen here, what's going to happen there when the Antichrist rises up and what's going to happen. Oh, we don't need to worry about that. We need to just worry about if we're going to maintain our faith and our victory and our salvation that God has given us mm -hmm. until he says, well done, Right? Until he says those words. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. But these fears will try to rise up and exalt themselves against the knowledge of God and said, well, I'm still here. Right. I'm not going nowhere. Right. And this is real because you've been through this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but my God is greater. Mm -hmm. my, God cre my God created the, everything, the host of heaven, everything, right? The spirit wouldn't even be allowed to even operate to whisper in my mind if God wouldn't have allowed it. But the Almighty is going to come back and judge that evil spirit. And the scripture says, I, we will judge with him. Right? We will judge these spirits and these, these fallen, these, these demonic angels that came down with Lucifer. We will judge them with the Lord. So we can't let these things that try to rise up for, to stop our inheritance of the promised land of God's kingdom. Right? To exalt himself against the knowledge of God. God will deliver us from all of our fears. And if that fears, if that spirit keeps trying to rise up and try to intimidate you and try to make you feel weak, keep before the throne of grace. Get your comfort and your strength from God's grace and by his, 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 his increase and overflow, right? Because his perfect love casteth out all fear. Amen. Glory to God. He has perfect love. Thank you, Jesus. And that he loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever shall believe on him, right, shall have eternal life. But then when he comes back, as Elder was saying on one of our trips, that he's coming back as the father. He's coming back as the judge, the holy one of Israel to have all judgment. Right. 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 I can't find myself in that place with that devil that's trying to speak to me, this lie, going to hell with it. Right. I have to Jesus. walk right here and say, Lord, I don't need to have fear of this thing. Right. right? I don't need to have this thing you're telling me to put away right. because the spirit of fear is saying, well, this is going to happen again. Right. Right. I'm going to believe God's word that right. he's going to deliver me from all my fears. my fears right individually right what have i been through right oh well you know you haven't been through this i have you don't know what i went through you don't know i almost died mm -hmm. from this thing this is this is my fear right literally it's an individual this right. is my type of spirit of fear because i went through this y'all don't know what i've been through right god says all your fears all my fears it's individual he knows right. 
He knows exactly what happened, what went through, and God says, I'm going to heal you, I'm going to keep you, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to guard you, right? Because Lord. the Lord is our strength and our Thank shield. Yes, See, but the devil wants us to not have faith, so the darts come and they, they hit you. Right, right. But that shield of faith, he says, above all, Jesus. it's above all. Come on. So we can have the, the, the casting down of thoughts, we can have all the other pieces, but if we're lacking faith, you have an open target right in your heart that yes. comes for that faith that you said that you had and it's going to come and try to hit it. Yes. Yeah. And we know that God does not operate outside of faith. Right. As we were speaking of last night, right? right. We have to have faith. It's, it is impossible to please God without faith. Right. Right. Amen. So this is, this is a good word. Individual fears, individual matters. Mm. Yeah, well, I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me mm. from those things, Lord, from those experiences. So Mm -hmm. This is so good. Yeah, yeah, brother. The Lord has has uh, the same same word here, but just for another witness, Philippians four. Yes, sir. Verse six. Yes, sir. Let me turn to. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Philippians four and verse six. Be I love this scripture. Be careful for nothing. That's it. Right. This careful means mm, moving in your own accord, basically. Not moving in the accord that God says to tread and trample every serpent and scorpion. Mm -hmm. That you're cautious. Oh, I don't know. Hold on, hold on, though. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like this, this, this one's big right there. I don't, I don't know about this. So you're cautious and you're being slothful in the way that he said tread. Mm -hmm. Right? He said move without fear. Mm -hmm. Have faith in this thing and you will accomplish it. Right. So be careful for nothing. But Lord, but what about this? He said, yeah, but be careful for nothing. Right. Don't lean on those things which are behind you. What I delivered you from. I'm going to heal you, set you free and give you new power. We either believe him for his word or we do not. Right. That's at the end of the warfare. That's what it really does come down to. Amen. Are we really going to believe what is written or we're not? Mm -hmm. So no matter if it's a, a, a warfare for an hour, a week, a day, we just have to resolve in ourselves. The scripture says it and walk in faith because it'll be tested. Right. So be careful for nothing, but in everything, right. by prayer and yes. supplication, yes. with thanksgiving, yes. right? Say, Lord, I thank you for waking me up, Lord Jesus. I thank you for giving me breath. I thank you for giving me life. We have to start our days off like this. I tell my son, son, have you woken up and said, thank you, Lord, for another day? Wake up saying, think and say, oh, man, it's another right. day. I got all this right. stuff to do, man. Don't get into that mind of the devil. Right. Get into the mind over here of Christ that said, I get to live. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm living and I'm redeemed, covered by the blood of the Holy One of Israel. Thank you, Jesus. And you think, Lord Jesus, that I was fit to even receive the promise of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to me, delivered the truth and knowledge of your word. It's your spirit that gave me the understanding. I give you glory, Lord that today is the day of the Lord. Today I have to, uh, I have the power and the victory to overcome everything that would try to exalt itself against you, Lord Jesus, because you are in me and greater is he who is in me than he that is in this world. Hallelujah. Even our own flesh, right? Right. He's greater than our own flesh. Amen. Jesus. Right? Right. Because the spirit of man, right, that, that has the scriptures say, that he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city without walls and is broken down. Right. Anything's coming in and out. Yes. God's power and grace is so strong that he's, he's able to control the spirit of the flesh, that means, right? right. My will, my way, how do I want to do things? Be drunk with the world or be drunk literally with excess of wine? I can control by the power, by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. I'm not doing that. So he that is in this world, even our own flesh, man, because it comes down to this flesh that the devil tempts. Yes. So it's, we, we're giving so much glory to the devil. Man, this flesh is so wicked and it's, it's in the members, it's in sins in our members, as Paul said. Right. It, it's, it's always trying to do the opposite. And how much, even to today's topic, as the Lord said, was slothfulness. Right. It's so hand in hand. Right. Right. Look at the kings and the rulers of Egypt back in the world. They had the, just sitting on their throne, getting way with the palm trees, just chilling back, right? They thought Jesus was coming to do the same thing and build his kingdom. Now he said, no, mm -hmm. I came as a servant. Jesus. Humbled myself, Jesus. came to serve, to bless and to, and, to, and to heal those who have, right, that are blind and that are lame and all these things. I came to do a work that is spiritual, not to come back and be exalted. Not yet. Right. So they didn't receive him. Right. Right. 
So when we wake up with this supplication, with prayer and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Right. That means, Lord, you know where I'm at, but yeah. Lord, you're said because I've been here, right? I'm like, yeah. I don't got to say every, yeah, no, the scripture yeah. says say it. Yeah. The scripture says, says it. Mm-hmm. You know, well, the Lord knows, yeah, he knows, and he also wants you to do your part and say it. Let your right. requests be made known unto right. God. Yes, right. right? Say, Lord, I'm struggling with this thing. I'm feeling a weight with this thing, Lord. It's feeling like it's killing me. Yeah. Lord, this spirit's not leaving me. Yeah. Lord, I feel like I'm ready to throw in the towel, Lord, yeah. you know. Yeah. But he says, speak it. Yeah. And then you yeah. feel the glory come upon you and yeah. come over you and overshadow you. And then you yeah. stay in that strong tower because the righteous yeah. run into him and he is the strong tower. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yes. That name, the yes. king yes. of glory. Hallelujah. Yes. The eternal father. Yes. And you're like, whoa, this right. just changed. Right. Because why? I just declared it. Right. Because I just said what your word told me to do. Come on. Now the whole, the whole thing, it's like the heavens just open. Yes. And the angels came down and they have their swords drawn. You feel just his protection and you feel his glory come down upon you. Like, Lord, I feel your peace and I feel you in such a way. I feel strengthened and quick and Lord, I'm ready to go. Lord, I'm ready to go. Hallelujah. And then this is growth. This is, Lord, I see it now. I see it. I, I got to be more diligent with this thing. Yes, with my hands, but with yeah, the yeah. spirit, right? Not being in just warfare. Where I'm being so overwhelmed and overweight. I'm being slothful for real. Yep. No, rise up in victory and power that God's given you and go and press through. Let's go. Right. This is going from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Right. But we have to do what the scripture says. Let your requests be made known unto God. Right. Verse 7. And the peace of God. Right? What do you say over here? That the peace, right? The peace is as a river. Jesus. And the peace of God, right. which passeth all understanding. Right. But Lord, how, do, how is this going to happen? I get the testimony from the, what, they, what the doctors tried to tell me I had, right? That I, there's one medicine that will take it away, but I have to get all these, all these shots. I said, I'm not getting them. I tried to go and fight to go over through this way, through that way, just to get this medicine that they have that eradicate it, they say. Mm-mm-mm. I was fighting and fighting. The Lord said, give up. Stop doing it the wrong way because it wasn't going to work. Mm-hmm. Right? But Lord, but how? God says, don't worry about it. I'm God. Amen. We don't know how he's going to do it. Thank you, we truly don't. You can guess all day. You can get overwhelmed by that all day. Yeah. I suggest you just give praise and thanksgiving unto God Hallelujah. make your request be known and move in faith and go be diligent. Jesus. And then when you go be diligent, your mind's off of that thing. Hallelujah. You're not overweighed by it. And now you're being productive with your day and you're multiplying the talents unto the glory of God. Jesus. Right? Jesus. And then in that whole time in that place, God will give you the peace that passes all understanding. Well, Lord... This has been against me. They said this, you know, this doctor and this degree, uh, it don't matter, man. All of that will pass. All of that, what we could even comprehend, like, Lord, I don't even know how I have peace right now, but I have it. And it, God's so good. He says, don't even try to figure it out because you ain't me. <laughs> don't even try to figure out how all this is happening. Just, just, just relax and rest in my peace, right? Don't try to jump out of the river of peace. We find ourselves doing that too. Although I just got to do something, right? I just, I'm so used to being anxious and stressed out and anxiety that I just got to go back and hang out with it again. No, man, relax. Enjoy the peace, Enjoy the peace right? Shall keep your hearts and the peace of God, uh, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts, right. right? And minds through Christ Jesus, because the devil tries to come to tempt us and to, to pull us away, these devils, with our heart and our mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The test of faith is within our mind and in our heart really anchored in our heart because we can cast these thoughts down in our mind as we ought to that exalt himself against the knowledge of God. But when our heart is set and our mind is made up, right, as the song says, we're going to continue in that way. Amen. And so we continue, let, let, let's, let's reverse it even, right? Because this, this is what we got to renew our minds with and have in our minds. When these thoughts are coming in our minds that are polluted, perverted, and wicked and all that, cast them down. Verse 8 says, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things, right? This is building up our minds, thinking on things above, right? This is where we need to be, our minds thinking on things above. Glory, hallelujah. The Lord, His glory, His kingdom, right? And then, Lord, what, what, what am I to do with my diligence here? Right. And guard our, and guard and govern our minds. And this is how we maintain that peace. But again, this really does tie into today's word with diligence. When we're not diligent, our peace will be disturbed. Oh, absolutely. The spirits roll right in. 
because there's a breach, mm -hmm. because we're not being diligent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Literally. Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen it, I've been there, I've mm -hmm. done it, right? And, and I thank God for His grace, and you just, you've got to just repent and pick it up. Just repent and pick it up, thank right? You, Glory to God. And so, thank you, Lord, that the Lord delivered us from all of our fears. That's individual, right? All my fears, what I had, Joshua, right? God delivered me from all that. Whoever, right. whatever thing we've been through individually, someone else hasn't, all that. Right. Yeah, well, God knows and he'll deliver you from those things. Amen. Right. Psalms 55 verse 22 declares, this is how we got to be in this diligence. Man, this is, this is so true. Being diligent with doing this scripture. Psalms 55 verse 22 says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Come on. So what burden you're carrying may be different than what I'm carrying. Mm. So whatever that individual type of weight and spirit again you're battling, whatever it is, whatever that burden is, cast it upon the Lord. Yes. And he shall sustain thee. Yes. Right. Sustain thee, right? This right. again is the Lord yeah. doing this through us. Right. This yes. is what these scriptures are, are edifying us to do this diligence Amen. and this work. It's not us doing it, but it's God through us doing it. Right. Yes. We subject, our, subject right. ourselves in obedience, and then His Spirit, the Holy Ghost, takes over and yeah. does the rest. Right. He leads and guides us, and then honestly, until we get there, He may not even show us, yeah. because He just wants us to get there, yeah. right? Because it's like going to work. Okay, I'm going to go, well, how am I going to do it? I don't know how to do the job. Well, did we even put on our boots and go and clock in? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's going to show me how to do the thing until I get there. He could, sometimes he does, but in reality, he's wanting you to do your faith with your works, man of God, Come on. right? And so you get there, he may not even show you, and it'd be uncomfortable sometimes, but glory to God, your faith being Jesus, his word is, he is faithful to his word, and he'll show you, right? So cast your burden upon the Lord, he shall sustain thee, he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. This is what the, the, the wicked spirits do, and these slothful spirits do, they try to move us away from, from walking in the way of the Lord. They try to move us out of the way of righteousness into unrighteousness. Right. From being diligent unto being sloth. Right. Right. Yeah, they just want that, that little bit over here. That little bit of a way for them to come through. Right. And I tell you what, this little tiny, it was a, no, when I got into it, it was a bigger breach in the home. But there was a weed starting to grow through the wall back here. Mm. I'm like, <laughs> so it's like, look at this. There's a weed, I'm like, how is this even happening, Right? And I go out there and I'm laboring. I see and I see, okay, it's this one hole that the, 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 the what are <laughs> squirrels? Squirrels used to come to, right? And all this and that. I'm like, all right, I got to get this in order, man. And so I go and I'm cleaning out and then I, I, I repaired it and did the work. And so it's like what we may want to overlook, obviously, or we don't want to go and pay attention to. The, the scripture says, he, you know, that you're, you're, you're not working and you're refusing your, your slumber in your slumber, your slothfulness to labor on the building, in that place, that building decayeth, right? Mm -hmm. You literally got to go and do these works. And so now that the repair has been made, and I didn't know it was going to be that big until I got there, right? I didn't even know how I was really going to do it. I'm like, Lord, this is foundation. Yeah. Yep. And this, this slab to that, and I'm like, this is like bigger than I'm even wanting. I thought it was going to be like a 20, 30 minute quick fix. <laughs> right. not, not so. Right. Right. Many right. times I go, my wife will say, I'm like, I got it. I'll do that in 20, 30 minutes. Right. Now in this house, these are plaster walls. That's a plaster ceiling. I put a drywall blade up there, it ain't going through. I'm like, Lord, what is this? He's like, this is labor, son. I'm like, yeah, this is a labor I'm not used to, Lord. I burn them blades up real quick putting these lights in, but God be glorified, right? Until you get there, you won't know how, but you just need to go and God will show you, right? Amen. That God be glorified. Amen. A couple more scriptures, saints, that Romans 15, 13 says, amen, Romans chapter 15, verse 13, now the God of hope, see, this is who Jesus Lord. is, the God of hope, we can hope in Jesus sure while is. we're being diligent. Yeah. We can hope in his grace and his joy and his strength to give us strength yes, renewed each day. Hallelujah. We don't need to be overwhelmed by tomorrow for tomorrow has no. enough cares of its own, right? And we just need to cast our cares and burdens upon the Lord, yes. for He cared for us, right? Yes. He cared for us, right? So this God, Jesus, now the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace yes. in believing, right? That ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. This is this is this is edification, right? We're building up from here, Amen. right? We, 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 we have different testimonies of where we've fallen short in obedience unto the scriptures, but God be glorified that God strengthens us to do this, and it's Him. Last one is Isaiah chapter 40, 
verse 31. But they, right, let us be this, but they that wait upon the Lord. So let's pause right here. So you're telling me, Lord, that I got to wait upon you? You're telling me that I have to stay in this uncomfortable place? I don't know when you're coming. You don't tell me. Sometimes you're waiting to see how long if I'm going to be faithful to wait upon you. They that wait upon the Lord. We're so used to getting things done like this and like that. Well, why don't we take today's word and even apply it to while we're waiting on whatever that thing is we're waiting on God to do? Right. Be diligent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right there. Right? Agree. right. So while you're waiting, Lord, whenever you move on this, yes, I'm having faith you are. Yes, but you. while you are, you're watching me yes. and you're seeing what I'm doing. I'm going to be diligent. Because also in that place, I'm going to guard my peace because I'm doing what you said. Glory now, if I get overwhelmed and I stop slack or start slacking over here and doing this, then it's going to flood up on me. Glory right? Stay in the word. Be Thank diligent. Lord, I got the peace upon me. Thank right. But Thank they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Mm. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Yes, yes. They shall run and not be weary. Right. They shall walk and not faint. Right. The devils will speak opposite of this. Right. right? You're going you're gonna to crash and the wing is going to break off. Right? God forbid. Right? That's garbage, right? Uh, you're going you're gonna to trip and fall. You ain't going to run. You're going to stumble. Right. You're going you're gonna to fall and knock your front teeth out. God forbid. Right? All these things, these devils, this is what they speak. They speak opposite of the word of God. That's what they do. And it puts a fear upon the person, the man of God or the person of God, right? The saint, hallelujah. Right. And, and it puts a fear that you go hide the talents. Right. But when you just be diligent, when you keep working in the spirit and in the physical, let's bring the healthy balance back. Thank you, Jesus. There's a place you can get to being overworking yourself and being exhausted Truth. and going over the top on certain things. Truth. Right. Lord knows mm-hmm. that's too much for you. And God will come in with his mercy and say, son, you need a break. Right, right. Son, you need to take a breath yes, right. because you're getting in the wrong spirit now. Right. You're, you're in your flesh right. being super diligent and you're being rude. I know, that's right. Right. Been there, right? It happens. Right. I'd be like, Lord, please forgive me. Oh, but I knocked out 30 things today. Quick, Lord, you see that? He'd be like, yeah, but son. If you would have been patient on me and seen that, I just wanted you to do the 25, not the 30. The 30 puts you overboard. Now you're stressed out. Right. Right. It's really like really being hearkening to the spirit of God while you're being diligent. Yes, sir. That's the balance. Yeah. While you're being diligent, hearkening. Mm-hmm. And he'll say, son, lay down, take a break. Right. Mm-hmm. Go, go play with your children and go, go labor in a way that's not being exhausting. Just go labor in a way that your children need you to play. Right. Whatever the thing is. Right. And that God's so good that he even made a day of rest, right? He himself took a day of rest. Right. Amen. Right? And this is so beautiful that you don't have to be so... I mean, this is like, this is like the world when you think about it. People that, that are in the world so heavy, right? Grinding, grinding. I was once there 24-7, seven days a week just hustling. And it's, it's exhausting. It's overwhelming. Right. And it's like what God says, yeah, be diligent, but then I might give you some rest too. Right? But let's find that right place in its rightful spot what's diligent and what's that certain not a, not a huge time of rest but there's a small there's, there's a little area of rest right where the lord says that's the resting point right. let us seek the lord and see what the right balance is with that right? right that when one balance is overweighing another it's not a just balance right right you're being too much on a break you ain't being diligent enough right. you're being too diligent you ain't taking it you ain't you ain't catching up on your sleep right man you you got Look, you in the wrong spirit all week. God says, go get some sleep, boy, and, right. and get back in balance. Yeah, that's right. 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 But let's not make one outweigh the other and point blame on, on anything. Right. Because this thing can keep going both ways. Yeah, right. right. But let's let us have that healthy balance. That is a just balance. Right. And so much that you can condemn the just in that place. Right. That. Oh, I'm so I'm so diligent in my labor. Look at them. They're taking a break today. They're taking a vacation. Right. 
I'm going to keep evangelizing and preaching all this. I'm not going to take a vacation ever. But then the saints go and take a vacation. You're like, nah. And you start to be more justified and more righteous than them. But when they're perfectly right with God. Right. Thank you, Jesus. Right. That's our that's right balance. Come on now. But then you're over here laboring and you're in the wrong spirit preaching a message, not even with grace, not even in the Holy Ghost. You put the message together and it wasn't even of God. So now your labor is starting to become in vain. When God said, go take a rest. <laughs> go sit down, boy. Right? Amen. So there's a balance with this. But we want to bind that spirit of slothfulness. That's what today's message was, was on that the Lord put on me. Amen. And that when we, when we really do this thing and we just don't overthink it, right? Let your requests be made on to God. Be careful for nothing. Don't worry about these things. Well, what about, what about, man, away with that. Just move in diligence and God will guide you with the wisdom. Right? You're going to see fruit and multiply and increase on all ends that God said he'll do through his word and he's faithful. And that you give God the glory at the end of it. Right? And so I praise God for his word. I praise God for everyone in the house today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God for everyone that would be online here in the word. Amen. Um, looking forward to what this next year is going to bring. And then with, with the new addition to the family, yeah. my first girl, praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And, and also the labor and the, and the work of the Lord. Amen. I'm excited to see. But I thank God for everyone that's here today. Amen. Yeah. Salute again to Elder Brian and his wife, Didi. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and of course, my wife and all the saints in the house. Amen. Salute in the name of Jesus Christ. May God be with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord.